Okay, good afternoon everybody. This is Jasper Lawler, Market Analyst, going into our weekly market analysis webinar. Let's get through these risk warnings and then I'll crack on with the with the webinar. As always, feel free to shoot any questions through the chat or Q&A boxes in the, uh, the webinar room. But otherwise, I'll be heading through um, some of the, the more popular products traded, namely uh, the major US benchmarks, UK 100, Germany 30, some of the major currency pairs, and some of the most commonly traded commodities. Um, as you can see on the screen, uh, you know, the timing, the open of our of the futures disguises it slightly, but we're looking pretty green in, in equities today. And um, if you read my morning note, you know that's probably not a massive surprise given the huge turnaround that happened in the Dow Jones Industrial Average yesterday, uh, sorry, on Friday. Um, it was the biggest turnaround in four years, um, which is you no know, small feat. Uh, the Dow was down 250 points after the, the U.S. unemployment report ended up the day 200 points. So, you know, a 450-point turnaround, um, pretty impressive. And obviously, European markets closed before a large chunk of that turnaround had taken place. So just a bit of catch-up today. Um, yeah, it's it's, uh, it's it's a little confusing with the um, with the data I know because obviously it was a poor report, nothing really good to take out of it. Um, obviously, the, the the economy is still producing jobs and the unemployment rate is still 5.1 percent, so nothing on the whole to complain about. It's just about the sort of short term trajectory of where the data is headed and a bit of a weakening in the labour market. And um, so the market sold off just on the idea that that's bad for the economy, but the recovery was obviously on the idea that that may mean lower interest rates for longer if the Fed hold off on, on hiking interest rates this year. Um, and, you know, if they hold off this year, maybe they've just left it too late and they can't hike it again until the next uh, the next cycle uh, if we do experience a bit of downturn in the economy, which there are signs that's already starting to take place in the U.S. Um, so that's you know that's the state of play right now. Uh, currencies are sort of unchanged. Um, we've had the the, the, the uh, PMIs uh, were generally pretty disappointing today. Um, just an FYI, we had an update on the the services PMIs. The UK services PMI fell to a two and a half year low. Mm. So some of the the weakness in manufacturing that we've seen for a while looks like it's spreading across into other sectors of the economy. And uh, so again, it's an expansion, nothing massive to worry about. But you know that's why we're not seeing huge gains in the in the pound um, as we're not in the the euro either, because um, uh, both Germany, Italy, and Spain all missed expectations. There's only France who coming off a low base beat their expectations. Um, so a bit of a sort of slowdown. In, in manufacturing, we saw last week, services this week. Um, but, you know, the reason that the currencies aren't all dropping off, um, as, as you can see here, is, again, that sort of weak U.S. data from last week. So it's weak in the U.S., weak in Europe, so currency is sort of level peggy at the moment. We'll dig into the charts a bit more in a second. Um, oil's having a decent run at the moment. Um, gold had a big move higher on that weak data on Friday. And uh, so we're going to have a look at the chart on that um, to see where the prospects are there. A lot of these markets caught in ranges and um, good for range trading styles where you're buying and selling at the top of the range. Otherwise, for trend traders, you're just waiting for that uh, that breakout, really. I'll um, I'll bring up our uh, our economic calendar here, but um, but really. You know, I needn't bother because um, really all all the big things happening economic -wise, economically are pretty much taking place on Thursday. We're, if you're trading the, the Aussie dollar or the Japanese yen, maybe we're paying attention to the, the um, central bank meetings, uh, the rate setting meetings there for the RBA and the Bank of Japan, the BOJ. But otherwise, um, it's... Uh, it's all taking place on Thursday, uh, which if I'm uh, that should be the 8th. So let's just gently scroll down here, and we'll find ourselves on the 8th. 
and you can see that obviously we've got some kind of trade data from Germany, which is um, significant, obviously, um, for the euro, especially in light of the slowdown in, in China. So that's worth watching, but really it's the Bank of England minutes and rate decision. Um, and uh, we also have, I'm not sure if it's listed here, but it certainly should be, is the, uh, the fact that we've got the ECB minutes um, released on Thursday as well. So that's the, the minutes from their September meeting. Not seeing that listed. But, uh, and then later on, we have the, the minutes of the, the FMC meeting. And that typically gets updated in our calendar a little bit later too. So two minutes, two sets of minutes, ECB and the Fed and the rate decision from the Bank of England all taking place on, on, on Thursday. So that should be an interesting day, particularly for the, the FX traders. I'll skip across to my uh, my charting view here on the on the platform. Here you can see that disappointing services PMI that I'd pop up here on the charting screen, um, ready to go uh, uh, with uh, watching what's happening in the, the British pound. Why don't we Why don't we look Why don't we start with currencies um, now? This is the daily chart for the pound. There's a few things going on here, but um, you know, I think first things first, you've got to characterize, well, what kind of market are we in? Um, the 200-day moving average um, has been down sloping, but it's starting to flatten out. And you can see the price is basically not being able to make any grain above or below it. You know, pretty much characteristic of range trading conditions. And in this particular situation, uh, apart from that little false break out there, we've got quite well-defined top and bottoms of the range. Uh, now, we did dip below uh, on that week's uh, manufacturing data last week. We dipped below this uh, sort of 150, 170, which I think is significant. We've, so far, it's proved just to be a little bit of a false break because we do have strong support beneath it. It's that uh, May 5th low or sort of May 4th low probably and um, the 61.8% Fibonacci retracement of this rally from, from April through June. So, you know, that's our, that's our main, that's the main thing we're looking at at the moment. You know, obviously the momentum is to the downside, but we're still not entirely out of range trading conditions. We're back above that kind of key 5170 at the moment. Bit of, um, I think, what could be the determining factor that will end up making this a bit of a false breakout is this uh, bullish divergence that's starting to take place here with the RSI. So as we've seen a lower low, made on the, in the price chart, a higher, um, a higher load made here. There'll be a bunch of people in this kind of area uh, who are looking for, uh, you know, looking for the breakout short in this 51.70 type vicinity. And, you know, they'll be looking to run to the exits if we get a bit of a push higher. We haven't had the data justification yet. But um, we do have that Bank of England meeting later this week, and there's a possibility that even though um, inflation has dropped back down to zero percent, core inflation is still running quite high, um, not near, no, nowhere near the target um, of two percent. But um, wage growth in the UK um, has really picked up recently. So the, the three months ending in July, it was 2.9 percent. That's much higher than, than than we're seeing in the US. You know, if you're going on wage growth alone, again, it's something I mentioned in my morning note. Uh, yeah, your wage growth, point, maybe retail sales as well. Um, really, the Bank of England should be raising rates before the US. Um, so a few, a few, you know, looking ahead to that Bank of England meeting, I don't think anyone's going to really want to go too heavily short uh, the pound. And we are at the bottom of this range. We're seeing a bit of a bullish divergence, so some scope for a move back into the range. Uh, it's, you know, yeah, the minimum back to this 200-day moving average, I would have thought. Um, <clears throat> but, you know, can't deny this rising trend line here. Um, you know, that was a sort of a, a triangle-type formation. It broke out, touched back, and that's where we are. And we're just struggling to push through into a lower low at the moment. So uh, even if we get pushed back into the range, it's not to say that this can't be the development of a downtrend and a push back down to um, the 146 type vicinity, down to these lows. And I would say if we do concrete, concrete uh, con uh, you know, concretely break through, you know, this low and then this sort of little cluster of support around the round number of 150, 
then uh, then I think we're pushing into the lows. Mm -hmm. Over to the euro. Now, you know, I want to draw your attention straight away to this just particular candlestick from Friday. Now, that's a pretty weak candle on the face of it because, you know, that was some pretty terrible US data. Um, I mean, I say terrible, much worse than expectations. Yet, the euro barely managed, I didn't, did it even finish higher on the day? Barely. It pretty much finished where it started, rallied 100 pips, and just gave up the whole 100 pips plus and finished the day flat. So even we're getting a little push into 113 again here, and you know who knows when we take up the higher bid. I, th I think that is symbolic of some sort of uh, weakness in the euro. Again, maybe a little bit of trepidation about really pushing it higher going into the ECB minutes this week. Um, when the last ECB meeting took place, interest rates were uh, sorry, uh, inflation was still holding at 0.2 percent year over year. So there wasn't an absolute emergency that you might indicate now, now that we, we see deflation year over year in the Eurozone, as of the latest figures. Um, so maybe not quite the kind of panic amongst ECB members to suggest a, um increasing the amount of quantitative easing or extending the timeline of the QE program. So that you know, that's, that's the kind of statements we'd want to be listening out for in those ECB minutes. That would be, you know, if, we, if, if there was any sort of suggestion that the policy could be expanded, that would be weak for the euro. And I think that's why the euro is holding off a little bit at the moment. I don't think we're probably going to see that. But there is a slight chance of it because, um, because that was only a, a week or so past that major volatility that saw the market sell off because of fears of the uh, the China currency devaluation and the China stock market sell-off. So there's certainly a bit of fear of going into that ECB meeting, so they may have discussed raising uh, increasing stimulus. If they do, I think that's that's negative for the euro. If not, you know, maybe we'll, we'll get this uh, the, the kind of breakout that didn't happen straight after the, um, the weak U.S. jobs number. Of course, the counterfactual to that is that we also have the FOMC minutes, and so obviously they didn't hike interest rates in September, um, so they may use the minutes as another opportunity to sort of suggest that um, you know they still are, still are looking to do it this week, uh, this year, and that's that's what policymakers have been saying in speeches since the meeting, still looking towards possibly December. But, you know, they've been saying that all along. You know, they've been saying if the data warrants it, we're willing to hike rates. Well, the data's not warranting it right now. So, you know, take take that with a grain of salt. But you just got to go with the initial market reaction at the time. If the FOMC minutes are already, you know, more, more much more hawkish than the sort of um, the, the, oh, the failure to raise rates would suggest, then, um, you know, then there's... There's, you know, some some chance for dollar weakness, and again, more euro. Um, uh, sorry, dollar strength, and um, to make up for some of the weakness that we've seen recently, and correspondingly, euro weakness. Um, but yeah, that was that was you know, it was a weak candle on Friday, and worth mentioning that you know, when the Fed did um, hike rates, that was this. We got we got above that 114 handle. And then in the space of three days, we were right back down to the, um, the bottom of the uh, the range at this low at 111. So again, two big opportunities for the euro to break out. Um, the Fed not raising rates, and then a poor jobs number, and it's failed to do so on both occasions. So, you know, when you fail to act on weak data, weakness in the face of strong data, um, you know, relatively strong data for the euro, obviously it's weak US data, but you catch my meaning, um, is it's a sign of general weakness. I think it's the best use of economic data. You can't forecast it. Um, just look at today's uh, UK services PMI. You know, there was uh, consensus was for an increase. It collapsed down to two and a half year lows. So economists often get it wrong. You know, us as individual traders will get predictions of the numbers wrong, but you can look at how the market reacts to the data and in this case, I would suggest that the market's reacting fairly weakly to, in the case of the euro, to what should be a positive catalyst for the currency. Um, now let's switch over to dollar-yen. While we're on any currencies, certainly feel free to shout through in the forum uh, if there's any slightly more 
esoteric ones, I'll probably just by default stick here at the dollar yen. So as you can see, just uh, real choppy range trading conditions. With the benefit of hindsight, when you've just wanted to buy at 119, sell at 121 over and over again, uh, several trades involved there. Um, you know, when you see that kind of big breakout, you know, it takes guts to sell it back into the range again. But, you know, when you are in that range trading conditions, you know, that's, um, you know, that's the nature of, um, that's, you know, that's, that's the trade. And um, providing there aren't any huge gaps, you know, the risk can be kept fairly minimal. Uh, you, know, you know, you know what you're shooting for. It's, um, you know, within a reasonable margin of error, you know, if it drops much below 119, you know, you know, it looks like it's breaking out to the downside. Cut your losses. Same thing to the upside. So, worth considering these these tight range conditions because literally that's 200 pips either way. Again, with the benefit of hindsight, minus a bit of spread, made maybe margin a bit of minus a bit of margin for error. Buying a bit above 119, maybe selling a bit below 121, sort of thing. But uh, this range has been going for a while now, and it has to break out at some point. And um, uh, you know we're capped by the 200-day moving average, so that's uh, you know that's it's, it's above us, so that kind of puts us in a kind of bear trend scenario. Again, we've got this kind of trend line break, the retest, but we haven't pushed lower. So to me, that actually, that, you know, the fact that we're below the 200-day and below this broken trend line, we should be dropping off, but we're not. So you know, it's um, to me, I think perhaps actually we've got another push higher. Dolly yen qu correlates quite well with uh, with equity indices, so, and they're all pushing into the top of their trading ranges at the moment. So the yen and equities have another little push higher from here. Okay, so change the base here. Let's um, let's let's skip over to some of the indices. Uh, you know, I've got it first on my screen here, so let's look at this uh, US 30, our proxy for the Dow Jones, which obviously saw that huge reversal on Friday, and uh, you know, this is how we're starting in futures today, and uh, you know, this is just um, that beast, uh, that little monster from Friday, where you can see we basically went down to the bottom of the range, nice little buy just above the support at 16,000, pushes are basically right up to the... Um, which I have as the sort of first layer of, um, of resistance in the range, about the sort of 16,700 level. And I think it would make sense for us to, to you know, it's, it's, a, it's a risky buy at this stage because we've already run up. But, um, you know, not to say to buy into the market right here because, you're, you know, your, your risk is much higher than your reward, but it seems logical that we would move to test that 16,700 level. And I think probably move through to test 17,000 judging by the current momentum. But uh, again, best not to get too caught away, uh, caught up in the current movement because you might have said the same thing here. We're getting a push down to the lows. Well, no, it was a false break lower. We're back into the range again. So expect the, expect a possible roll over here at 16,700 back into the range or likewise back more, uh, you know, a little bit higher back at the 17,000 level, which does correspond with this larger support um, from these these lows here back in um, December and, and, and Feb. If I look on the weekly chart, you know you can sort of see this support didn't work, but that's kind of where we're holding off at the moment. Um, this support did work alongside the 200-week moving average. We've got this one if we push lower, um, and you know that's that's the one that we were just looking at that we sort of failed at. Um, on that false break higher in the 17,000 vicinity. Back to the 17,000, um, I still think it's going to be a struggle to, to, to make new record highs this year, uh, but we'll certainly be looking a bit more positive up there, and you could certainly say that the short-term trend's reversed, and there'll be some short-term trend trading um, possibilities uh, to the upside, I think, if we got through that 17,000 level. Yeah, uh, someone's asking about the the S and P uh, 500. So yeah, obviously our contract here for that is the US SPX. So I'll, um, I'll just pull up the chart. Am I going to be able to do that on the screen now? I thought not. Let me jump over to my other screen. The um, the Dow and the S P are sort of swapping roles in terms of uh, relative strength. It was the S and P that was holding 
uh, the range a bit better. At the moment, it's the, it's the Dow, and I think to some extent, maybe you could fundamentally say that's because, um, you know, if the, if the Fed are going to hold off for a while on uh, raising interest rates, the, the companies that are set to benefit the most are the more international, on internationally orientated companies. Um, that um, that make up the Dow, just because it, uh, you know, you would expect if they are going to hold off rates and we start to get more signs that that's the case, the dollar would weaken and that would be good for multinational earnings. Um, so yeah, so the, you know, this is um, this chart type here. The um, in the, in the um, the U.S. 30, the, the level's a bit more sort of uh, certain here. I think we've got some sort of ranges to deal with. And uh, if I just extend this one across, um, that's what we're starting to um, push back into here. Uh, hold on, I've moved that up somehow. It's, uh, you know, if you if you go off that low, that's the kind of vicinity we're entering at the moment. I've got that, that break, but obviously you can see we just kind of remained within that. What's well, a fairly choppy range, and uh, obviously we could run right up. You know, this is going to be a peak, the, the equivalent of 17,000 on the Dow is up here around sort of uh, 2,025 odd on uh, the S&P 500. And there's, I think there's a good chance we get a run up to that. But you know, based on previous conditions, you know, we're up uh, based on futures one, two, three, four days in a row if you count today. So. You know that's gonna we're gonna start running out of steam fairly soon, and we we're into this this zone, so I think there's some opportunities to assume that there's um the range is still in place starting here uh but it could admittedly <laughs> go all the way up here, so it is tricky to actually just jump in the market um, yeah it's, I think it's yeah the question here is um through the chat is would you use two thousand as resistance I think that's you know basically what we're trying to the market's trying to do at the moment you know that breakout here that was a false break of 2000 and uh, you know that's what we've basically been attempting to do is push through 2000 so that's the kind of the center of gravity if you like but that's not to say that's quite where the market's going to sort of fall away from and be your exact resistance line as, a, you know, as you can see on my chart, I've not really used that as the resistance. I'm kind of using these lows from back over here, which again were sort of false pushes down to 2000. You know, eventually those false breaks, um, you know, we couldn't, the downside momentum couldn't, couldn't uh, didn't work after four attempts, and that's why we pushed higher. So, um, you know, we may see the same thing to the upside here. Um, that was kind of a, a false attempt. You know, we couldn't get even up to it there, couldn't even get up to it there false break there you know what what about this time this will be the fourth attempt if you like um, maybe we get another little false push through so it's that vicinity that we're, we're dealing with for sure um, and worth worth probably you know given the fact we're in range conditions I always pull up the RSI um, for overbought oversold but you know maybe even better is um, something like stochastic because you could see when the market's getting overbought and then just look for that to roll over. And it's going to be somewhere in that sort of um, 2,000 vicinity. Of course, if the trend begins, it's going to, you know, the oscillator is going to remain um, overbought. But, uh, you know, that's the nature of the use of the indicator. It's just a way to pick out the top of the range. Um, of course, the, the top of the range could break. Mm -hmm. uh, moving swiftly on. Let's, uh, so we looked at UK, U.S. markets. They, to be fair, are sort of driving the action. Uh, but let's look at the U.K. 100. Notable one here. Uh, put this in the chart for him. This is the weekly chart. This is basically a, a tweezer bottom and, and a pretty drastic one at that. And on the weekly chart, which is, you know, obviously when you're looking at charts, you, uh, the higher the time frame, the more influential the, the, the price action. So this is pretty influential and um, not much surprise to me that we're seeing a push into the top of our, our range here just beneath that 6300 level. This line looks a bit uh, nowhere-ish on the weekly chart, the horizontal line, but it looks a bit better on the, um, the daily chart. And then, so we, then we've got this, uh, again, this kind of zone of resistance up into this broken rising trend line. Let me just, if I can zoom out a bit, you can see um, you know, that trend line. 
Uh, there's a few different ways to draw it. The tax stuff and that low there, there. But, you know, it's not the exact, in my opinion, it's not the precise drawing the trend line that's the key. It's the general concept um, of the fact that the line's been broken and we're, we're challenging a retest of it. That's the board consideration. And then for more exact levels, look, you know, use the horizontal levels. But basically this low here um, up into the, uh, the sort of uh, the open from this um, from this week of the July 5th is the, is the kind of area I'm looking at. Um, so down to the daily chart. How are we doing for time? We've got about five minutes left. But yeah, we can sort of see that um, this is quite a little false break there, but pretty much that's the area of resistance we're dealing with, and we're right into it now. So we um, there's a big move higher last week. I wouldn't be surprised to see a little false break, perhaps down lower again, but maybe there's some opportunities down here into the range for a lower risk buy uh, off that um, off that weekly tweezer bottom. Um, obviously, the cancellation of the pattern, and you know when you're wrong is when it drops through those those two twin lows there which marks the uh, tweezer bottom on the weekly chart. Germany's chart, you know, I was, uh, you know, putting the chart on, this is potentially a sort of pretty choppy looking triple bottom. And the neckline of that would be the sort of 9800 level, which again, we're pushing into. So all the, all the industries sort of confirming the same kind of idea. Um, of course, keep in mind we're below the 200 day moving average, the, the kind of broader longer term trend is um, is downwards, but um, got a little triple bottom in the context of what is potentially building into a, uh, a longer term double bottom for the for the Germany 30. So I sort of feel that maybe we haven't, if we, again, if we scale that against the weekly chart, that's a nice rising trend line we've got there um, that's been working out well, and we haven't been able to push through that rising trend line. And that um, start of that double bottom on the daily chart is off that rising trend line. So, you know, just a few factors pointing to um, scope for, for equities to push up high. And in the case of the, the Germany 30, um, I think there's a good chance we push up into the neckline of what could be a, a daily chart double bottom, which would be in, um, in the vicinity of sort of 10, 10 500 really is the... Um, the major line in the stand, I guess. And then we've got this little short-term one in the meantime to, to look out for. So, got a little bit of time left here just to cover oil and, and gold. Start with oil. Uh, again, constructive, I think, to look at the weekly chart when, we deal, when it, we're dealing with this here. Look at this. So this was the low after the big collapse. This is the low we put in at 45 on Brent. False break lower, big bullish engulfing candle, but the market's so bearish, we just haven't really built on that yet. That, I mean, it's a bearish sign that we haven't been able to immediately follow through on that strong candle, but it's understandable. You know, the sentiment is so down on oil, but we've been consolidating for a while here, and there's a possibility that... Um, this this marks the beginning of a, a double bottom in oil, and um, <clears throat> again, and, and and you know, not to say the double bottom pattern actually completes, but there's a chance that um, this this bullish engulfing on the on the weekly chart was the beginnings of a, um, a push back up to seventy dollars per barrel. Yeah, and again, there's and there's that big reversal pattern, a big um, a big hammer pattern on the. Um, on the monthly timetable, um, which um, hasn't been followed through well, but the lows have not been taken out yet, not even the original low. So down to the lower time frame, we're in a very tight trading range, similar to equities in a way. Um, and so if we do get a push through this trading range, you know, that's the kind of, to me, the short-term trigger that some of this, um, you know, some of these longer-term supports are, are starting to, to hold out. But until then, you know, there are opportunities at the top and bottom of this range. It has been going a while though, so expect some, some false breaks if that range is to keep working. Over to good old gold, probably saving the best till last year, because um, 
I mean, this is my RSI trend line. Been interesting to keep an eye on this since this break. So obviously, it it remained within its sort of wedge triangle type pattern on according to price, but RSI broke. It's held above 40, and it's held above this rising price trend line, and then this big old bullish engulfing candlestick on um, on Friday after the jobs report. Certainly, a few a few factors here setting up for a breakout higher in gold. Um, you know, it's, again, you're just going to get these false breaks because we're below the 200-day moving average, and the tr trend longer term, you know, let's not, not, let's not forget, is um, pretty concretely down, um, drifting down. So heading up into 1,200, there are going to be plenty of sellers, and it's going to be a difficult way up. But I think there's scope for a little a move back up to perhaps that. Um, well, I'd say, for, you know, firstly, you've got to overcome the 1,170. <clears throat> So if we do eventually get a little break of this, can, uh, this triangle here with a close above this trend line, um, you know, you can obviously redraw the line based through that high if, if you prefer. Uh, it means the price would be, uh, the breakout area would be a bit higher, more like 1,150. That could take you up to 170. And then through there, that would take us back to the 200-day moving average. And a lot of people start getting interested at that point. And a good chance we'd carry up to 1,200. And then, you know, from there, uh, you know, that's when... It's going to be it's going to be a rough ride higher, but I think there's I think we probably bottom for now in, in gold is my sense. Um, another thing to look out for is this this 40 level on RSI. You know we make, we went to that overbought level, dropped down to held 40, and uh, we're holding in this range. If we, if we drop to out of this range, uh, not so promising. And obviously we've got this nice rising trend line here, also as a little guideline as to whether our kind of bullish thesis on gold is um, is holding any weight. You know, prepare to accept when you're wrong. You know, down through um, uh, basically one one hundred. I, I think you've got to accept that probably gold's going down to test the lows and perhaps breaking. So that's it. We've uh, nicely got through the half hour here. Hope that was of some use uh, to everyone here. Um, good luck with trading this week. Thursday definitely going to be a nice one in terms of the, the central bank action. Uh, but don't, get, don't forget the RBA and BOJ before that. And uh, again, good luck. Jasper Lord signing out. Talk to you next week.